I told my team, it's how I carry myself. I ain't never treated nobody with no disrespect, even in times when I was like, okay, now you're trying to push me. But I'd be like, I'll let God fight my battles. Because he said, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. So if something happens, I just let God fight it. And we keep it moving because you got a business. As soon as you step out of pocket, they come after your what? That's right. Your business. business. Fantasia Barino recently took to social media to shed light on allegations involving Oprah Winfrey and Steve Harvey. According to Barino, Oprah used Harvey to blacklist Taraji P. Henson in Hollywood. This claim follows a series of statements by 50 Cent suggesting that powerful industry figures like Oprah and Harvey manipulate careers behind the scenes. This controversy has brought to light the complex power dynamics within Hollywood, raising questions about the influence and fairness among top industry figures. These claims have sparked a mix of outrage and demands for transparency, although neither Winfrey nor Harvey has publicly responded yet. I heard that Taraji was upset because you you'd been uh, asked to do a rental car. Talk. I personally called Toby Emmerich, who and was at the time the head of Warner Brothers you know, and, and he said, that well, that means we have to do cars for everybody. Then I said, then we do cars for everybody. And if it's necessary, I will pay for the cars myself. Come because, on, big well, we don't want you to do that. So. You know, from that and was one thing, trailers were another there. thing, Why food was another there with thing. Three women? And everything got handled. And everything, yeah, everything got handled. And I just so I don't even know, know, I don't even know. I don't even know. Between. You know what is so disturbing to me? Why is my name even Please. in this conversation? Because you're over with Can I say something? Why is my name Can I in say this something conversation? Because right. 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 I have just been the champion for everybody. Steve Harvey has spoken about the significant control that powerful figures have in Hollywood, noting that those with substantial influence, like himself and Oprah, Oprah Winfrey often survive allegations and controversies with relative ease. Hollywood is a system. They have an ingrained system out there, man. You come out here, you get an agent. Then, then a lot of them got a manager too. And then when you sign a contract with a Hollywood attorney, they 5% of your contract for the duration. So if you sign a five year deal, they get 5% of your money for five years. And everybody falls into that deal, man, because they lock you in. Oprah used Harvey's connections to limit Henson's career prospects, leveraging their combined power to orchestrate this behind-the-scenes campaign. These allegations have stirred significant debate about power dynamics and fairness in Hollywood. People that look like me, like Oprah, Tyler, Lee Daniels, and I gotta put my brother Steve on the list. Y'all knew I was not wrong. Each one of you said to me, Monique, you're not wrong. And when I heard you go on the air and you said, my sister didn't burn too many bridges and there's nothing I can do for her now. Steve, do you know how hurt? This problem that you had in Netflix is rich people problems. Mm -hmm. Cause they looking at us going, you talking about you didn't get millions. Mm -hmm. Well, you got this, you ought to be cool. But when you say, Mo, it's the way you went about it. Mm -hmm. And I want to explain that and I thank you for saying that. Inequality is devastating, and it's extreme. And when people said, Monique, do you think calling a boycott was extreme? you damn right. But isn't inequality extreme? So we've got to get to a place where we're unafraid to say it out loud. Taraji P. Henson has been vocal about the challenges she faces as a black woman in Hollywood. She has expressed frustration over persistent pay disparities and the ongoing struggle for equal opportunities. Despite her success, Henson feels that black actresses often have to fight much harder for recognition and fair compensation. Yeah, I'm a leading lady, um, so I know what it is to need support and how to support. And especially when you're dealing with something, the, the subject matter can be so dark, yeah. you know? So there were moments on set when I, w I was watching her and when I knew she didn't need to stay into it, I'd go over there and make her laugh, you know, to lighten the mood a yes. little bit. And whenever they yelled as a rap, I was all in her face. Yeah. <laughs> so she could go home and, and, and leave Celi at home because it's a lot when you're dealing with you know, um, so, uh, playing these characters. You're on the set, you have your chakras all open, you're allowing this character to use your body as a vessel. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so you have to learn how to flip the switch on and flip it off. Otherwise, it could drive you mad. Mm -hmm. You know, because you have your own, like she says it all the time, she has her cross to bear and then your 
characters cross them. It's too much. It can be too much. Furthermore, Monique has long accused powerful figures like Oprah Winfrey, Tyler Perry, and Steve Harvey of blackballing her in Hollywood after she refused to promote the film Precious without additional compensation. During a heated discussion on Steve Harvey's talk show, Monique expressed her feelings of betrayal, noting how Harvey criticized her publicly without prior discussion. Mo told Tyler Perry, uh -huh. Oprah Winfrey, Tell him. and Lee Daniels mm. to suck her private parts. Not my private parts. Well, you said if I had one, yeah. I want them three to suck my private parts. Yeah. It wasn't private parts on stage. Tara G emphasizes the emotional toll of these battles and the need for systemic change to prevent future generations from facing the same obstacles. I'm just tired of working so hard, being gracious at what I do, getting paid a fraction of the cost. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of hearing my sisters say the same thing over and over. Um, you get tired. Mm -hmm. And when you start working a lot, you know, you have a team. Mm -hmm. Big bills come with what we do. We don't do this alone. The mm -hmm. fact that we're up is a whole entire team behind That's us. Right. Yeah. They have to get paid. So when you hear someone saying, oh, such and such made $10 million. No, that's not that. That didn't make it to their account. Mm -hmm. Know that off the top, mm -hmm. Uncle Sam is getting 50%. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So do the math. Mm -hmm. Now we have 5 million. Mm -hmm. Your team is getting 30% or whatever your team is getting, off of what you grossed. Sometimes not more. after what Uncle Sam took. Now do the math. Mm -hmm. During a recent interview, Henson expressed her frustration over being consistently underpaid compared to her peers despite her significant achievements and accolades. She highlighted how exhausting it is to continuously break barriers and still have to start from scratch during pay negotiations. I just, I'm, You're tired. I'm, a, I'm only human and, and mm -hmm. it seems every time I do something and I break another glass ceiling, when it's time to renegotiate, I'm at the bottom again mm -hmm. like I never mm -hmm. did what mm -hmm. I just did and I'm just mm -hmm. tired. tired. Yeah. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. I get that. I get that. It wears on you, you know? Because mm -hmm. what does that mean? Mm -hmm. What is that telling me? What is it telling me? Yeah. And what does it tell me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? And if I can't fight for them coming up behind me, then what the fuck am I doing? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why I have other things. I have my TPH brand. I have my mental wellness. I have other things because this industry, if you let it, whew, it'll steal your soul. Yeah. But I refuse to let that happen. Yes. Critics have voiced concerns about Oprah Winfrey's treatment and compensation of black actors in her productions. First of all, it's exactly what you're saying, T, which is that, especially for black women, and I'm going to be very specific, mm -hmm. it was like you were never here. And the fact that each one of you, every single one of you, had to audition for this role, mm -hmm. roles that was second nature to you. Second nature, yes. yes. Roles that yes. no one should even question. Just the minute the name comes up, the question is, how much? How much do you have? Yes. I learned something very important here, that especially... It's not enough just to come in and be a director. Mm -hmm. We've talked about the challenges. And for me, you, Fantasia, Danielle, knowing how hard they fought to not have you all here mm -hmm. and knowing how hard we had to fight to ensure that is what, what you just said right now rings so true. Henson's comments sparked further scrutiny of Oprah's role as a producer, with critics accusing her of not adequately addressing or rectifying these pay inequities. Social media reactions pointed out the contrast between Oprah's billionaire status and the alleged low pay for black actors in her projects, suggesting a deeper systemic issue within Hollywood's pay structure. We feel about billionaires that we do not want them, we do not trust them, we do not like them, we do not want to see them celebrating anything, dancing, singing, None of it. And it is also a distraction from the real issue at hand, which is the systemic underpaying of black women for the work that they do, no matter their rank or their history or their resume in the business of entertainment. 
Additionally, black women often encounter stereotypes that undermine their abilities and contributions. Despite these obstacles, many black women demonstrate remarkable resilience and strength, continuously fighting for equality and recognition. We're supportive and cheerleading her on. However, this has nothing to do with that, so we wanted to clear it up. Guys, this is not me saying, oh, I'm mad with Taraji or Taraji has a problem with me. By no means, me and that sister ain't doing nothing but hugging each other with our arms wrapped around each other saying, baby, go get yours. Go do it. With the butler, you just saw that script. I saw the script. Now, you don't normally get scripts just to read a script just to read it. Mm -hmm. I was off at the part of Gloria. With Empire, and as Sydney said, more to come, I was offered the part of Cookie. Now, I don't have an issue with Mr. Daniel saying, you know what? They want to go with Taraji. Right. No problem. Oprah Winfrey recently addressed the controversy surrounding Taraji P. Henson, claiming she did her best to support the actress. When black women portray powerful characters or speak out against injustices, they sometimes face backlash, including being cancelled or blacklisted. This reaction is often fueled by a reluctance to accept strong black female figures challenging the status quo. As a result, these women may find themselves ostracized within their industries, their careers suffering due to their assertive and refusal to conform. Because people are saying that I was not supporting Taraji. Taraji will tell you herself that I've been the greatest champion of this film, championing not only the behind the scenes production, but also everything that everybody needed. So whenever I heard that there was something that people needed, I'm not in charge of the budget because that's Warner Brothers. You know, that's the way the studio system course, works. And we as producers, everybody gets their salary that's negotiated by your team. And so whenever I heard there was an issue or there was a problem, there was a problem with the cars or there was a problem with the food, I would step in and do whatever I could to make it right. And I believe that she would even vouch for that and say that it's I true. I think she would vouch for that. I can vouch for that because I've seen you and your work and behind the scenes, how you step in and you have put your own money up for everybody being the greatest and rising to the, meet the rising of their own life and so I mean, all this stuff about there's a, you know, there's a... However, critics argue that Oprah's comments were more about preserving her public image as a kind-hearted and supportive figure rather than reflecting the true nature of her actions. Now, Taraji P. Henson is out here saying she's going to quit Hollywood. And she's been talking about the money because it's funny out here. You guys really have to put this into perspective. This woman has been in over 40 movies. I mean, she's had an above average career in Hollywood. She's been in successful films that have made a lot of money. Even if you break down her lead roles as an individual lead, she has made over 200 million. For a lot of people in the industry, that is unheard of. And even as a lead ensemble actor, she's been a part of big box office films. Even looking at her supporting roles, they've made a lot of money. One thing that I love about Taraji is that she's been talking about the pay for actors, especially for black actors. I mean, her career has been a rocky road, y'all. For many of you guys that have seen the David Fincher film, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, one of her first roles, she only took home $40,000 was after taxes that was after she had tried to negotiate a deal of getting 500k for that movie fortunately she was only able to come home with 150k a large majority of that went to her team it seems to be a reoccurring theme in hollywood this is why advocating for actors is more important than ever this situation has sparked debate about the authenticity of public personas and whether influential figures like oprah are genuinely committed to supporting other black women or primarily focused on maintaining their reputations viola davis has voiced her concerns for so long she's won every single award you can win unfortunately that does not matter hollywood is a money game unfortunately they're going to find a reason to not pay you a lot of black actors careers have been stifled because of this come on now she could at least get decent pay i really wish the best for taraji and if leaving hollywood is what's best for her i feel like she should do what she wants despite being a prominent black woman herself oprah winfrey has faced allegations of not treating other black women fairly critics claim that oprah's actions and decisions have sometimes been detrimental to black women's advancement and well-being now this is getting interesting taraji b henson also also made a comment regarding the Keith Lee situation. So she actually posted this IG comment recently. This is what it says. Life really is too short for this behavior. He wasn't in a seat. They gave celebrity assigned seats. I rehearsed all damn day to go hit my mark and that young man wasn't in a seat so he missed his moment. His ego is hurt. He will be fine. I cleaned it up at the end of the show. No love lost here. Hashtag God bless. Now this comes right after Keith Lee giving his explanation of what happened. 
Now, if you guys remember, he mentioned that he had no issues with Taraji B. Henson at all, but more so. But in this comment, she flat out said his ego was hurt. Now, it is important to know that she didn't make an apology live on the show, but apparently from what I'm reading, she also talked to them right afterwards. Now, I doubt we're going to hear from Keith Lee again regarding this situation because he has clearly moved on from this. But it is very interesting to hear all this from Taraji P. Henson. But after hearing all this, whose side are you on now? The allegations suggest a need for introspection and accountability among those who hold power regardless of their race or gender. And she was crying because Whoopi had gotten her ass because apparently, see, this is what Oprah be doing. Fantasia was like, well, since I'm finna um, play Seeley, um, I need to call Whoopi Goldberg. Auntie Oprah, you got Whoopi, Goes, Whoopi Goldberg phone number? And um, Oprah says to Fantasia, uh, that woman don't want to be bothered. That woman don't want to be bothered. The ancestors rose up out of the ground and put wind in Whoopi Goldberg's ear that Fantasia was looking for her. And when she found her, she let her know what the deal was. And then when it was time to promote the show, here came Oprah down to the ABC studios where Whoopi Goldberg is the GOAT down there. And try to do her backpedaling, popping down there on stage and whatnot. And, and Whoopi was like, no, bitch, you ain't coming out on my stage until you tell me what happened, why Fantasia didn't have my number to call me. Comedian Cat Williams recently made headlines by exposing Oprah Winfrey during an appearance on Shannon Sharp's show. Williams discussed various issues, including Oprah's alleged mistreatment of black women, challenging her public image as a benevolent and supportive figure. Y'all, I can't be silenced this interview, this interview. It is just, it's giving Dunning-Kruger. What is the Dunning-Kruger effect? It's something that happens when someone who isn't especially knowledgeable in a particular area overestimates how much they know or how good they are at a given activity. And a lot of people through identity alone, and when I say identity, I mean their maleness, their race or ethnic group, their religious group, their um, age, assume that they have knowledge just because of their identity. And the T is, you don't. They don't mean anything. Nothing. You know what you know because you know it or you don't know it. And in the world of, of, of research, we use this term called epistemic humility. Even if you've been studying something for 50 years, you acknowledge that the things that you know might not be right. And that some new information and evidence can come forward that can challenge the things that you've been taught for all those 50 years. You have to have humility to know that your perspective is not the only perspective. But folks with Tony Kruger, they can't do it because they don't even know enough to know they don't know anything. Neil deGrasse Tyson said it best, as the area of my knowledge grows, so does the perimeter of my ignorance. When black women speak the truth about their experiences and the injustices they face, they are often met with indifference or hostility. Society tends to resist acknowledging uncomfortable truths, especially those that challenge deeply held beliefs or expose systemic flaws. Okay. So they saying that the color purple was snubbed by the Oscars. They saying that Taraji might be blackballed. Look, friend, it's Kiki. Don't come around me saying Taraji should have waited to speak up about her mistreatment um, behind the scenes. She should have waited until the war season was over because that's why the color purple was against her. Don't come around me saying that, please. Please don't. Because you know what? Nobody ever likes when a black woman speaks up. The Oscars never get it right. They don't, okay? They didn't nominate the man in the Barbie movie. It didn't even get a Barbie one. Like, it's just too much. So let's not run with the narrative that Taraji was wrong for speaking up because guess what? Whether she spoke up on Tuesday or Thursday, the result probably would be the same. We talking about people like Angela Bassett who don't even have Oscars. And she's still to this day Tina Turner in my mind. So in my, in my opinion, listen, let's not go with the narrative. And please don't come around me talking about Taraji, see, she shouldn't have spoke up. Black women frequently express a sense of futility when sharing their truths, believing that their words will not lead to meaningful change. This sentiment arises from repeated experiences of being ignored, dismissed, or retaliated against for speaking out. Nobody ever likes when a black woman speaks up. And it doesn't matter when you do it, the results will be the same. You will suffer consequences for speaking out and speaking up. So do I think Taraji missed out on anything by telling her truth? Absolutely not, because guess what? She wasn't being paid fairly before, and she would have had maybe she would have had an Oscar nomination, and still wouldn't have been getting paid. She would have been broke with an Oscar nomination. Now, what can you do with that? That's all I got to say. Please don't come around me talking about this. Bye, friend. That's it for today's video. Stay tuned until next time.